Here long as she gonna be great. Long as she gonna be great. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name yeah. is uh, not Kent Washington, but he does approve this message. How we doing this morning? Doing good. Good, good, good. Um, lucky for the day again. Let's get this right with God, right? So first we have a freezing cold in the teens, and he was still God. And then he had it torrential downpours, and he was still God. Mm -hmm. And then he switched it up and had a kind of cold morning, and the sun was shining, and he was still God. And this week we could have walked around with flip flops and, and shorts on mm -hmm. in, in February. <laughs> And he's still God. Amen. I just love it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and um, all wise God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for allowing us to get up this morning with just a portion of our right mind, God. Thank you for allowing our limbs to work and for us allowing, allow us to have the opportunity to dwell and to worship and to study and to fellowship with these your people, God. Come into this study right now and have your way, God. What we say, let it be clear, let it be plain, God. Decrease anything in me and increase the word that you have planted inside of me, God. We know that what you put out to us, it is good. And we're going to eat from it on this day. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our Christian uh, enrichment team and all of those who come together to make this study such a wonderful fellowship, God. Let us be mindful of your word and what it says. And that what you say, God, is, ne is never maybe. It's always yes or no. And we will obey. It is in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. And let every heart say amen. Amen, amen. 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 So we are praying with, with and for Brother um, Kent, who is just taking a little bit of extra time today. Um, taking a little bit of extra time. So in his stead, I... And I'm going to pick up on his lesson, but it's just going to pick up where where we left off. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about our dear friend, Easy. Mm -hmm. Boy, I tell you, God will do what he wants to do, or who him, he wants to do it, and how he wants to do it. It's, um, we're dealing with the... The fall from grace is what I like to call it. Mm -hmm. Being out in the in the wilderness all by yourself. And we've had the people take this time where um, they, they're in exile, right? And they had to um, see what it feels like not to have God's cover. So Ezekiel sees the vision of God and then he speaks the uh, word of God and um, now we're going to continue to see how God continuously tries to talk to his people and how he uh, ensures that we understand that he is God. So we're going to jump right into chapter 5. Now today we're going to kind of hasten through 5 and 6. Um, we're going to try to get through both of those chapters today, verses 5 and 6. So the word reads, and I'm going to be coming from the NIV version this morning, if my computer wants to uh, uh, cooperate. It says, now, son of man, mm -hmm. there we go, son of man, take a, a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up the hairs, and when the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of the hair inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city and scatter a third to the wind, for I will pursue them with a drawn sword. But take a few hairs and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. <coughs> Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A wind will spread from there all Jerusalem. We'll stop at verse four. Mm -hmm. Heesh. So, now, first, last week we had him cooking a pot of stew beef over some, some human feces. <coughs> and now we want to shave our head in the middle of the sea, uh, in the middle of the city. What's the first thing that's striking about that, that first commandment? What's the first thing that's striking, striking about it? Why is it so weird that he has them shave his head? The shaving of the head uh, signify uh, mourning, uh, 
repentance, being humility, mm -hmm. so humility. Mm -hmm. What was what was what pathway was was Ezekiel on before he was called to be a prophet? To be a priest. To be a priest. Be a priest. Mm -hmm. Priest yeah. and shaving their head. No. So if he was on the pathway, and the world knew him. The people knew him as as a priest or going through the process of, of priestlyhood, priestlyhood. Why would he shave his head? Right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. It is not it signifies mourning. I'm sad. But the second thing is, fool, you crazy. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I'm a nurse and I go out and kill somebody and watch them die. It's against what you were what you were called to do, or not kill them, but you sit there and you watch somebody die and you don't try to do anything about it. It goes totally against what he was put there to do. But then he doesn't just tell them to do that. He tells them to do what? Weigh it out and divide it out. Weigh it out and divide it out. Three now, parts. into three parts. Now, could y'all imagine? And, and, and he said, equally. Mm -hmm. Could y'all imagine weighing hair? Mm -hmm. Little strands of hair mm -hmm. and how meticulous that had to be. What does that kind of talk to you and say? Now God is into details. And his judgment is accurate. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's following his recipe and his plan to the mark. Mm -hmm. He's just. What he is doing has no question to it. Right? And we sometimes will make the comment I don't understand why God won't get them back. Mm. Yeah. Or why is this happening to me or not them? But God's judgment is holy, mm -hmm. it's accurate, mm -hmm. and it's just. The, the fool thing is if we ever got, if we ever knew God's plan, mm -hmm. <laughs> that'll make it a mess. A total mess. If we actually knew God's plan. So the first and foremost thing is, when he did it, it was done on purpose. Mm -hmm. And, go ahead, Deacon. But you know, the, sh the shaving of the head uh, at this time, uh, it was a shame, really, to, sh to shave your head. But it was a sign also that God into the lepers, you know, they had to shave mm -hmm. their heads. Mm -hmm. And this is what was done in Israel. And it represented uh, the tribe of Judah. Uh, I guess it did. Uh, yep, yeah, represent the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. But he also obedient. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was following instruction. That's right. I think that that shaving of your head and doing the hair and burning the hair and letting the odor and the smell go out through whatever the area it would go is uh, getting him prepared to start that journey to whatever we in Judah or Jerusalem. We're we're in. I think it's Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Very hurt we're we're in way. Jerusalem. Remember, right now he's in yeah. exile, but he's on his way. Yeah, on his way. He's on yeah, his way. This is a type of thing that's going to just doing to let him know the punishment is going to be put upon Jerusalem because of their transgressions. That's and right. I think that hair and that burning of the hair is to let him know that's, that's going to go over the whole nation. Mm. It's going over the whole nation. Now, what do those three those three areas signify? The sword, the pestilence, and the earth. Plague, the sword, the wind, the and the and the famine. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna catch them all. Yeah, it's gonna be pestilent, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna catch them all. And famine. Mm-hmm. And anything you think you're gonna grow ain't gonna grow because I'm gonna swallow it up with with, with locusts and everything else. You out of luck. Yeah, it's gonna be so dry that it's gonna turn to iron. Because now here's here's the thing that I recognize. When it's when it's evil and dead, God gets rid of it all. Yeah. <clears throat> we play around with it. Mm -hmm. We tiptoe over that part that we want to kill. God kills it all. <laughs> he don't play. So why do we leave remnant? Why do we why do we why are we afraid to speak against or turn away from things that are evil and that are not like God? 
If he could kill them all, he said, you're going to eat your sons and daughters and your daughters and mom's going to eat you. He, don't, he had no respect of person. And it wasn't that he wasn't compassionate. It was that he was just. He was just, right? Yeah. So there's one part that just uh, gave me hope. One part says, but he told him to take a little bit and tuck it in his hem of his door. Mm -hmm. I won't be tucked in him. The remnants. Mm -hmm. Somebody was going to be spared. Somebody going to some. There's some that will still listen. Right. That remnant, <clears throat> that, that little hem that, that was tucked. Uh, represents uh, those faithful ones, his faithful people. And, it, and well, some of them wasn't faithful. Some of them fell mm -hmm. up by the wayside. But those who were saved was uh, saved. That's right. Those That's right. People. We talked a little bit about not wanting to be away from God's grace. We always talk about God being loved and God being... Um, God having grace and may God protect me and God, God, but we don't, we don't want to look at the other side of that coin. Mm -hmm. It's what Ezekiel is talking about. God is also holy. Yes. <coughs> and he is not to be played with. Amen. He is not to be played with. And we, so we have to look at this relationship that we have with God that, mm -hmm. yeah, I trust you, God. But I got to trust you in the good and the bad. I got to trust that what your word said is true and that it's going to come to fold. That what you say is, is yay or nay. Mm -hmm. And we're going into the fifth verse, right? We're in the fifth verse, but we're going to do fifth, fifth and sixth today. All right, you know, it spoke, it spoke here in the fifth verse about the, says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. That lets you know just the same as we pet the baby mm. in the family. Mm -hmm. This was a nation, Jerusalem was a nation that God was so proud of. Mm. This was the, 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 uh, the jewel of, for him. Mm. And now this nation is, is doing the way that it is doing. And I don't know, I'm not going to want to move too fast here, but I was so excited when I read this and studied this for the second week, remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you super ready. You super ready. You yeah, super I can't ready. Last time you're ready to do it for this one. It's okay. okay. It's okay. But, but mama, you just brought up a, a, a super great point. You know, um, someone asked the question, why was he being so hard on? Him? When you know better. Yes. When I have shown yes. you myself, yes. when I've shown you my glory, when you know better, you should do better, and you did like they did. Yeah. So of course, I got to get worse. I got to get, and even worse. Yeah. I got to get you. Mm -hmm. You saw, it's different when you don't know better and don't do better. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, God was so hurt. Yes. He was so hurt. He said, I, even I. And that meant that his soul was hurt. That's another word. He was he was hurt and he was what else? Angry. Angry. Give me another one. Angry. angry, he was hurt, he was angry, he was what were they doing? Sinning. They were sinning. Yeah, and they were doing what? Well, Say it again. So then it, he was jealous. Mm -hmm. God is a jealous yes, God. Yes, God. It's like right. And you know, when you think about adultery, when you think about adultery on earth. And then this is what they was doing. That's why God look. was so grieved, because they was spiritually committing adultery. They had turned to another lover mm -hmm. and left God idols and things like that. That's that right. Yeah. And he was really grieving because these are the people that he loved so dearly, mm -hmm. so dearly. His chosen one. Yeah. And they was committing. Adultery. adultery. Uh, yes. Abomination. Not only were they committing adultery, they was worshiping idols now, yeah. and they had carried this this foolishness, these abominations, over into the temple. Into the temple. Mm -hmm. Into the temple. 
Oh, but that's a that's a that's a straight spiritual adultery right there. Flag on the plate. I, I, I look at the things that go on in churches. Some of it's so bad to have it on the news, and you can see the things that are going on, and these are abominations. But we are allowed to bring stuff into the church because we want to be fair to everybody. <laughs> but we just said. God is just. Our yeah. fair ain't his, his fair. So why do we allow that adultery to happen in the church? Mm -hmm. why, do we, why do we allow it? Because he just told us. I mean, we're going to spend a whole, a, a bunch of weeks. You got Jeremiah telling them. You're going to have Ezekiel telling them. You got a lot of people telling them what happens when the biggest thing is you were bringing that foolishness in my house. And when you acted worse than the sinners outside <laughs> That it will even come to church, don't even not even sitting about church, and you acting worse than those people. Because you should know better. Yes, you're not even finding the ten. You're not even following the ten commandments. They on number twelve. Yes. <laughs> they said the first ten overrated. Yes. You know what I mean? So that's why we we have to be careful about what we how we treat God's house. Right. There's a portion of what we're studying in, on, in, on Wednesday night. I invite anybody who's able to come out on Wednesday night when we're talking about the hero called the past. When you start worshiping things within the church that ain't even God, yeah. that ain't even kingdom building, That's and right. you're putting a bunch of worship in that, that is no different than the idolatry that God is upset with Amen. the people of Israel right now. Because we always, Mama didn't do it that way. Mama ain't here. We're going to do it the way Mama used to do it. Mama and God. Amen. To God be the glory. And, and, and that's, if we don't be careful, this same morning, now it, further down in the scripture, it says God has never done it like, God had never done it like this before. And he would, I mean, God has never done this before, and he will, he will never do it again. He right. won't do it like that. Right. Doesn't mean he won't do it. Doesn't mean he won't judge us. Don't mean he won't fix us. Don't mean he won't punish us. It just may not be like this. Amen. But you know, when I look at the three parts, let's bring it into reality what's happening today. That's the same what happened to Israel. Okay. As far as God's wrath, that's pestilence, famine, and disease. According to one third of the nation. That's one third of the nation. Then you have the wars going on. That's going on right now in the nation, according to other parts of the world. Then you have representing the third part, which would be scattering the wind. People, I mean, people are being scattered. So if we look at it right now, look at the migration. Pestilence, disease, and famine. This is going on. God is displeased with terms of the sins. And that's because you have to realize there's a lot of sins going on. We know that Israel was a horse nation. I hate to use that word horse, but it was a horse nation. And God mm -hmm. knew that. And then we talk about being on the mountain. That mountain represents, that's where they had the idols at. Mm -hmm. On top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Because it was near the water. And that's why they were going up there on that mountain top. And that's why he had to go up there and tell the people, you know, about that. Worship no idols. So let's let's break down what you said a little bit further. He said, "I want I'm gonna burn a third in the midst of the yeah. city. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm gonna do them right there in your. I'm gonna do it right there in your face. Right there. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna get you into your face right. where it's happening." Yeah. And he says, "I'm gonna do a, a third with struck with the sword. That means I'm even gonna let the enemy come in and get you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't even run. Cause Amen. I mean, I'm even going to allow my hedge protection to drop the wind. Right. And your enemy gonna get you. And the third says, and it was scattered in the wind. Those who even tried to run, I got them too. I, I'm going to get oh, them too. The so the simple is, you can't hide from God's wrath. Amen. No more than we can hide from God's love. We can't hide from God's wrath. So we're going to hasten on because we remember we got two chapters we're going to get through. So let's go to chap let's go to verse 5. This is what the sovereign Lord said. This is Jerusalem, mm. which I have set in the center of the nation with all the countries all around her, yet in her wickedness she had re rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Oh, adulterous woman. Therefore, you know the Lord, when, when the Bible says, therefore, y'all better get ready. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You have been more unruly, as we said, than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations of, no, I'm sorry. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord said. There you go again. 
Mm -hmm. I myself am against you. Mm -hmm. well. Could you imagine hearing God, the one that woke us up this morning, Amen. started us uh, on our way, yeah. healed our bodies, gave us provisions, loved our broken hearts, healed us when we couldn't find a, a, a soft place to fall, saying, I myself am against you. He already, made, he already made his judgment, <laughs> so I knew I was being handled. Uh-uh. I'm like, Tanya, I don't even like it when he get quiet, much less when he flat out say, I am against you. <laughs> Glory to God. And call my name. I am against you, Jerusalem. Oh my God, and I will inflict punishment. The same God who does miracle signs and wonders will inflict punishment on you in the sight, right in their face, in the sight of the nations because all of your detestable idols, because of all of your detestable idols, I will do, what, do to you what I have never done before and will never, done, never do again. Mind you, uh, he's talking to them. He's uh, talking to us. Right. Yes, ma'am. Ezekiel and Jeremiah had went through Judah and Jerusalem preaching before. The message had been had been given to uh, Israel. We want to call it Israel. Israel, Israel mm -hmm. before that to repent, mm -hmm. change your ways. It wasn't like he just came up on them and said, "I'm going to destroy you." They had been through that, and they had already told them what they needed to do to change their ways, their wicked ways, and they were very disobedient, very so, disobedient. So what happens, Mama, when now we have a book of 66, we have a, a, a book called the Bible, 66 individual books in it, filled with instructions, <coughs> filled with a playbook that tells us how things are going to start and how it's going to end, and we still disobey them. Think about how he did Israel. Yeah. How do you think he'll do with us? Mm -hmm. He's not already told us what he'll do. But you gotta look at here and saying that God saying that he was against them. Now we have this this scripture always says God is for you is more than the world against you. So look at it now because God's against you. He's more than the world for you. <laughs> That's facts. So, so you know he he reigns supreme, the sovereign over all. That's why he keeps saying, and this is what the sovereign God said, mm -hmm. not what your idol said that has uh, just a little bit of power. This is what the man who, who knows and created all things said, not what, what your mind thought. This is what the sovereign God said. It's yay or nay. Right. This is therefore in your midst, right in front of you, parents will eat their children, children will eat their parents, and I will inflict punishment on you and will scatter all your survivors to the wind. Great God on high. So I'm going to have all that happen in your face and then the ones that are going to run, he says all of your survivors, not my survivors. Mm -hmm. Do anybody in here ever think how many Ezekiel's are traveling through this land now mm -hmm. and Come preaching on. the word of God and telling us how we need to act? Mm -hmm. uh, we need to repent. And I just sit there sometime and wonder, Lord, is they worse than we are? Look at us. Look at us now. That, you know, I still stick with this, six, this the 12th verse in Ephesians, the 6th chapter. We wrestle, we, not. we wrestle not against flesh and blood. How many of us wear the whole armor? Mm -hmm. The lower oh, plate, the oh, breastplate. The shoes mm -hmm. right. and holding up that shield, That's putting right. on that helmet, mm -hmm. holding up that sword. How many of us are studying the word of God and living the word of God to keep that whole armor on? Mm -hmm. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, right. powers, mm -hmm. evil of the darkness of this world. Listen at that line. He says in and, and in high places. They're just they like they're, they're, right. they're just We're like still they're dealing with these people walking around here killing everybody, mm -hmm. raping everybody, sex trafficking, everything, yeah. sex that men think they can just walk up to a woman and take what they want. 
and then sell them to somebody else. Mm. How evil can you be to do that type of thing? Yeah, you you look at you, us. Don't you, go back that way to Ezekiel. Yeah, look at us. You right. Hold on one second. And, and, mm -hmm. and as she's talking about today's time, I started to think about our modern day our idols because you know Ooh. we we um, look at the story of Ezekiel and Jerusalem and we want to think that it's going and put, building an altar. Thank and you. And, you know, yes, that's it. But also there are modern day idols. Anything Absolutely. That, we put, yeah. that anything we put in front of God that Amen. we say is more Amen. important Amen. than God. Amen. These phones, money, uh, fame. You know, social media, all Absolutely. these types of things can become idols if you allow it to. Yeah. 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 If, but but the same thing, we reconcile back to God. It's almost like we, we got remarried to God. So don't think he won't get upset if we have a if we commit adultery all over again. Amen. 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 And now and we, we can't even watch the football game now without Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside of your walls, and a third will scatter to the winds and pursue with drawn swords. Then my anger, because mm -hmm. God is an if then, and it's a yes, it's a yes and a no. Mm -hmm. Then my anger will cease, and my wrath against them will subside, and I will be avenged. And when I have spent my wrath on them, they will know. Amen. That I, the Lord, have spoken yes, sir. in Injust. my zeal. Mm -hmm. In just. Right. Then they'll know. Mm -hmm. The problem is, why do we want to wait until after he's already done it? After, right. After, right. It's, after we've already had an opportunity to get it right, when we've already, we had the opportunity to get the other side of the coin, mm -hmm. why, did, why do we have to do all that before we know? Because by this time it's too late. Because he says, by this time I'm going, I'm killing it all. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And then, Pastor Austin, they gonna know. Mm -hmm. I thought he was a merciful God. He's a holy God. And yeah. he said earlier, he's a jealous God. He's a jealous yeah. God. Mm -hmm. They took all of their, but this state they youth and they brain mm -hmm. and all of their worship and giving it to idols. We got to be careful now to just stay up here with me right now. We got to be careful what we make an idol of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can make an idol out of your child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Every Mama. time the child say something other, you just write that. Mm -hmm. You can't right. say no to that selfish person you're raising. Mm -hmm. So when it gets grown and somebody tell it no, it don't know how to act. Mm -hmm. Chris Paul right there. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I'm going to stay with you. So is that not the way that God treats us too? If what if, what if God gave us everything that yeah, we wanted? Yeah, what if God? Because God doesn't spoil us. I, I'm of I'm of the belief that God doesn't spoil us. No, no. He gives us grace. I don't think He spoils us. He makes us tough. 
He gives us what we need. Yeah. Yeah. And some of what we want when we can handle it. Patrice could have easily told me she wanted a car at 10. If I would have gave her everything she would have wanted, I would have gave her a, a weapon of mass destruction. Yes, you would. Right. But he, yeah, I gave it to her when she could get it. So what if God, God has to treat us that way? But sometimes we do spoil our children way too much of what happens. You get a selfish grown adult. Disrespect. Disrespect. They're not ready for the real world. No. They offer no. a sense of entitlement. Yep. There you go. There's a big difference in being grateful and entitled. Anybody yep. know That's the right. life of Donald Trump when he was young? I don't like to know that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. When he was young, he didn't have to study in school. His daddy bought his test papers. He bought somebody to do his homework. He went to college, he did the same thing for him. And when he got out and got grown and his daddy was ready to transfer the business, he took overlooked the older brother because he had compassion and sympathy for his fellow man. Mm. Donald was entitled, he was selfish, mm -hmm. and he didn't have that. And that's why he acts the way he acts mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. well, that can happen to any of us. Yes, Pastor. Well, that's the thing, Donald. That's most part of the world, <laughs> but to to to, um, to 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 bring clarity or just to give voice to what uh, Deacon Holmes is saying is not God a merciful God? Yeah. Yes, He is a merciful God. Yeah. He's an understanding God. Yeah. But even in that, He does something that we have a problem doing with each other. And the Bible says that he chastised. Chastised. Right. 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 So even in even in the course of mercy, there has chastisement, there ought to be a lesson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but even with God, when even when the thing about it, if God gives you the whole picture, if you Ooh. do if you do this, this is what you're gonna get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, this is what you're gonna if get. Then. But he but he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't I'm going to say he doesn't use a sneak approach to let us know. Oh, no. He lets us know straight up. Amen. This is Amen. what is going, going to happen. Yeah. So the problem is never with the mercies of God. Mm -hmm. The problem is with the people who don't understand the mercies of God. Amen. Amen. And, and that God is a lot of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, we just named about 10 or 12 just now. He's a lot of things. And, and guess what? He is all of that. And, at the same time. And that's the absoluteness of God. Absoluteness of God. And, and that separates us from who we are and who he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, can, Pastor, let me ask you a question. So can you say, for an example, in my life, I had a situation come up one time, and I handled it on my own. Right. Instead of letting God handle it. Mm -hmm. Now, is it safe? I thought, I'm thinking right now, that if I would let God handle it, then it would have been handled correctly, but I handled it on my own and I got punished. Uh, Is that safe to say? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the same knife right there. That's That's Bible. Yeah, that, that's when you say lean not in my own understanding. That's right. I'll give you a prime example and I, I gotta go. But I remember when uh, um, I had a tire that had blown out. And anybody know I'm not the most mechanical man in the world. Oh. So because I had all the tools to change the tire, I told myself I was going to pull on the side of the road and, and uh, take the tire off and all that. Well, not knowing that there's a different kind of lug, there's a lock lug there, and oh, yeah. you got to pull this off. Well, about two hours into it, <laughs> that, that's about how long it was, two hours, I realized that you know, I'm out here doing something, I'm sweating, and I'm, I'm, I'm huffing and puffing, people looking at me. I took it upon myself to do it, made it worse than it was, and roadside assistant came there and done it in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, so the lesson I learned is, is that, you know, Lord, you've given me the, the, the right to, to call on those that help me That's right. for right. some things. That's right. and, uh, but you know, the man in me said, oh, ain't no problem, you know. Yeah. That, that goes back to the free will God. You had the will, you had the will to do it. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't your, it wasn't your gift to do it. Uh -huh. your talent to do it. <laughs> but we do that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'm at another church. I do it all the time. So, <laughs> so, so, it, so it, it behooves you to lean and depend on God. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And if, if, if it be for me to yeah. fix it, 
He'll equip me to fix it. That's right. That's right. That's right. But if it, if but if it doesn't, if it doesn't fall in His will for me to fix it, I need to be okay with the answer. But as Pastor said, and as we have said it before, it's yes and no, and it's if and then. If you if you go out there with the wrong tools mm -hmm. and try to change your tire, then you are still gonna have a flat tire. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. And that is facts. It's nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Or you gonna spend a lot. You gonna spend two hours doing absolutely nothing that's productive. Yes, Auntie. And not only that, God give us the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit. He tells us. He leads us. He guides us. That's right. And right. sometimes when we don't listen, then we pay the consequences. That's right. So let's go. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, so let's go back to chapter one. When, when Ezekiel first got this assignment, it said, and the Holy Spirit came into him. Mm -hmm. And he tells us, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. sometimes what we need to do is stop eating what Vanessa like to eat and eat this word some more. And let the Holy Spirit come in and do its work. But, but so, you know, well, you know, uh, because of their disobedience in verses 15, 16, and 17, it tells what God did to them. I mean, this was vicious. Well, let's let's just get to it real quick. He says, um, "You will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning and an object of horror to the nations around you when I." Inflict punishment on you in anger and in wrath and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. Not Ezekiel, not Jeremiah, not Vanessa, not Pastor. I, the Lord, have spoken. Amen. When I shoot at you with my deadly and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. See, God kills it all. Amen. I will bring more and more famine upon you and cut off your supply. You can plant it, but it'll never harvest. Right. I will send famine and wild beasts against you. And they will leave you, leave you childless. Mm. I'm even going to let your, your enemy come and get you. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you and I will bring the sword against you. Yeah. And what's that last line? I have spoken. I have spoken. So don't play with it. It is, it is true. Now, we're going to move to chapter 6 so we can somewhat get back on, on schedule. Chapter, uh, chapter 6, he deals with it. Mm -hmm. Now the, play, the playbook is out, mm -hmm. right? And he's about to start dealing with it. And, and he's, giving, he's giving instruction on how he's going to do this. And he's going to do it. But those hairs that he weighed, that he weighed out, mm -hmm. those little hairs, and he, he split how he's going to handle it. He's mm -hmm. jumping into it. The word of God came to me. He said, son of man, there you go. Mm -hmm. Set your face against the mountains of Israel. Set your face against the land that I gave him. Set your, set your face towards the promise, right? Mm -hmm. And prophesy against them and say, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the sovereign Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to the mountains and hills, the ravines and valleys. That means his voice is going over all the nations. That means he's now changed his 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 uh, direction from not just the, the nation of Israel, but to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get the ones who knew better and the ones who followed, who didn't know better. Mm -hmm. Ones who had the opportunity to follow me and those who did not. I'm about to bring a sword against you and I will destroy your high places. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm about to destroy your, your, your places where you sit up and, and flaunt your adulterous stuff against me. I'm about to destroy the places that look down at, at other folks. I'm about to destroy your high place. Okay, is he still telling them what he's going to do? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now he's being specific. Because see, back in verse of the chapter 5, see, he's telling them that the sons will eat the fathers, the fathers. Mm -hmm. See, there's going to be cannibalism going on in that country because mm -hmm. the simple fact, nothing will grow. Mm -hmm. And they are dying from hunger. So now and they have plagues and things that are running through the land like during Pharaoh's time. Mm -hmm. But see, we, we overlook the punishment of what's going to happen to them in in chapter uh, five. Oh no no no, we're not overlooking it. Yes, we're just going right. into chapter six because we're trying to keep up. We're trying to keep up with the calendar. Yeah, but, how did we get oh, behind in the first? we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> in, in chapter okay. six. In chapter 6, he's still talking about the punishment. Yeah. He's just being clear about it. Okay. 
He's been he's been real clear about it, yeah. and he's moving from a specific sector of folks to everybody. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you got to kill it all. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Leave no remnants. I, I'm not a good gardener, but I'm a decent gardener. You know, if you get down and, and, and try to pluck out roots, if you don't get the root, if you just clip the top, what happens? All you did was prune it. It comes back twice as strong. Yes, you yes. got to kill it all. So then, oh, in chapter 6, all he's doing is saying, I'm going to kill it all. Mm-hmm. He says, your altars will be demolished and your instant altars will be smashed. Now he's talking about those things that you put before me. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking about your job. Now we're talking about your child. Now we're talking about that car. Now we're talking about that house. Now we're talking about that vacation. Now we're, yeah. now we're talking about yeah. that status. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking about all those things that are part of that, uh, that spiritual adultery. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Against the Lord. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you what I'm going to do to you. I will lay the dead bodies of all these Israelites in front of their idols. I'm so bad. I'm going to kill you and your crazy people and put it in front of that which you worship. Mm. That's why they said you can't take your money with you. You can worship it all day long. You will die and your money will still be here. You can die and that that job will still be here. Die today. They'll have have a a posting for your job at ODART 30. That's right. That's right. That's so true. I remember a lady worked with me at World Electronic Wheels. She had sold that cable. And she sat there and worked on that cable with double pneumonia. Mm. And she, when she finally went home, and they called the ambulance, they airlifted her to Greenwood Memorial Hospital. Mm-hmm. And she was so far gone because she had refused to go and see about herself. If she had left that job and went and could see about herself, she might would have lived to come back. Mm. And like you said, <clears throat> in, a, in less than a week's time, they had somebody else over there. On the same so machine. That came. On that same machine, I'm not. I'm not saying not being thankful for your job, but your job can't be your. It cannot be your idol. It cannot be your God. You can't say I can't come to any for. Okay, I'm about to get in trouble, Pastor. Go. You can't say I can't come to any form of study, and I can only come to church when I feel like it because of a job. He will make room for it if you ask him. Because he is a jealous God. He wants his. He wants that time. He won't, there is no, there is no AAU, no, no dance company that will ever supersede time with God. Jesus. Now, every now and then things will happen, but it cannot be first. Yeah, that's right. And he knows, he, he knows your heart. That's right. Yeah. And if your heart and your mind stays on Jesus, mm-hmm. then he'll cover you. Amen. Now, I heard, I heard someone say one time, um, Instead of giving God what's right, we give God what's left. What's left. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. After, after I finish doing all this stuff I want to do, mm-hmm. then I give God what's left over and wonder why I can't quite understand or feel the fullness of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And it also tells us in the Bible the hierarchy of what you're supposed Come. to put. Uh, Let me see if I can find anywhere from Genesis Revelation where it says, put your car before, put your vacation, or put your your job, job, or put your your anything before Mm -hmm. me. He says, there will be none. None. Mm -hmm. You better look at Matthew 6 and 33. Mm -hmm. But tell me what it says. I can't put that back. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek it who? Seek what? Seek it first. First or second? The kingdom of God. In all things. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. And all things will be added. So if we get in order, then what we're trying to get, he'll give it to us. Because what we do is we get out of order and we make things adultery and we don't seek him first. And then we wonder why it just don't come to pass. Mm -hmm. Because we're having an affair. Mm -hmm. We're having a a spiritual affair. Mm -hmm. And And some of us are in divorce court and don't even know it. Yes, sir. And the last thing is you wonder why you've been working at that job for 30 years and you didn't put God first and then you get laid off Amen. or the, the company goes out of business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you like. Okay. And you know, those, those things I believe will happen, but when it's not first in my life, now. then another job is gonna come right. and right. provisions are gonna come. Right. That that stuff's gonna happen. He made us eat, we're gifted and talented for to, to do things 
But it's when it's out of order and he takes it away from it, he, you know what? He's going to lay you in front of that idol. Mm -hmm. and, and, the thing, and the thing is that we tend to, like you said, uh, Vanessa, we tend to do all those things first, put it on last, but when things happen in our lives, we want to take him off the, off the back burner and put him on the front burner. <laughs> And he said, too late. I don't know. We already in divorce court. That's right. Every now and then, grace does step in. Yeah, but right. just like this, at some point in time, he, he shifts from being God of grace to God of mercy to God to God of holy and God of judgment. He takes his hand off. And and he takes his hands off. off. God, please right. don't take your hands off. Right. And he gives them a warning. Mm -hmm. This one, Ezekiel wasn't the first. He had already said in Leviticus what he would do. He just said it to a, a lot of 